Hello, this is Mary Phillips, teen librarian and reference librarian, and usually I say welcome to my yard, but this time welcome to my kitchen, because a lot of things in my yard end up in my kitchen. Now this year I went to plant my squash, or to look at my squash seeds, and I have a box of seeds, and I went through it and I found my packet of squash seeds, except there was nothing in it. There was absolutely nothing in it. So um, what I did was I had squash left from last year. In fact, these are the last three squashes from last year's garden, which I just cooked. And look at all the seeds it gave me. It gave me all these seeds. So yeah, I didn't have a packet of seeds, but I had seeds. So I dried out some of the seeds from a previous squash and I planted them. Actually, I, I soaked them in water for a while and then planted them in some soil. And I wasn't sure if they would come up, so I didn't plant them in my garden, but look at them. They're really nice. They're really great looking plants. So I'll have squash in my garden, which is kind of sad because my brother called me several weeks ago and he said, Burpee doesn't have any squash seeds. And I've looked around in the uh, all the uh, local stores that have seeds, and I can't find any squash seeds. Well, duh, if I had thought to tell them to go to the store, buy a butternut squash and cut it open, you'll have plenty of seeds. Now, the thing that we really like about squash, and my husband loves it too, is squash soup. The easiest thing to make, and I'm making it today, so I'm gonna give you my recipe. It doesn't involve any milk or cream or anything like that. So I've got a pot here. I've got some shallots and some fresh ginger in it. And I'm just gonna cook it in a little olive oil. And I'm not gonna give you quantities because you can adjust it yourself. And once it starts to soften, don't <laughs> let it burn. Once it starts to soften, you can add your cooked squash. And I put in chicken broth, but if you're a vegan or a vegetarian, you can put in vegetable broth. And just I just make a huge pot of it. Now, the one thing that I do add, and I found out one time when I forgot to put it in, it'll taste very flat unless you put in a sweetener. And I put just a quarter of a cup, that's just four tablespoons for that big pot. And I usually use real maple syrup, but you can use honey. You can use regular sugar. So it just brings out the flavor. So don't forget that. But I haven't given you any list of how much to put in. You just make it as you like it, okay? Sometimes it's a little thicker, sometimes it's a little thinner, depending on how much broth I put in. And I just let it all cook together after I uh, cook the ginger and the, uh, the shallots. I put in this, I put in this, and I put in that, and let it simmer for a little while so it mixes. Then let it cool down. You have to let it cool down. And then I put it in my cheap blender over here, and I puree it. And I recommend cooling it down because my daughter had the same blender, and she melted it. So it's not a really expensive blender, but it does puree it very nicely, very smooth soup, and what about the nutmeg? I like to take a piece of nutmeg and grate it on top. And it looks pretty and it tastes great. And it's a really easy recipe. So if you don't have seeds and you want to plant something, I would say take your squash seeds. And oh, by the way, right before the uh, shutdown occurred, I went to the grocery store and I bought myself some basil. It's looking pretty desperate now, but I've been ripping it off and putting it in sauces, putting it on a pizza. And I took two sprigs of it and I planted in a pot. So your local grocery store, even if it doesn't have a seed section, might give you enough ideas for growing something at home.